there! You're watching the Gardens and Graveyards channel and today we're hanging out in the garage and we're going to clean up all of our tools and get ready for spring. Not just clean them, but sharpen the ones that need to be sharpened. So to begin with, we're going to take all of our hand tools that don't need to be sharpened and we're going to put them in a bucket of water with vinegar. Just plain distilled white vinegar. You didn't put vinegar in there yet. And basically it's like one tenth vinegar, one tenth part vinegar. How do you say that? I don't know. That's not exactly exact. <laughs> it does have to be exact, obviously. People use bleach too. So they're not going to stay in there for very long, so I'm not worried about my handles that are wood um, getting messed up. I just want to get in the crooks and crevices, get them really clean. So all the shovels are going to go in there. And I guess that's probably it. This, we'll put this in there too. All right. And this. <laughs> I think that's it for now. All right, so then these things, um, all of our pruners, we're gonna open up so that they're fully exposed. None of them are horribly dirty. So we're just gonna open them up. Wanna help me do that? Just get them all open. These ones are our oldest pair. They are very rusty. They've been left out in the garden many times. We'll see how good they come clean. All right, so now that those are all open and exposed, we're going to put my gloves on. I don't want to, so then we're gonna use this. It's bathroom cleaner. It's um, main active ingredient is ammonium chloride. You might know it as scrubby bubbles, but this is just the generic kind. Doesn't really matter, it's just so long as it has that active ingredient. And we're gonna spray all these down. Mostly just the metal parts. So everything gets cleaned everywhere. So now while those are soaking for a couple minutes, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning our hand tools. Since this one's plastic, it'll be really easy to clean. I'm going to take a scrub brush, knock all the icky stuff off there. I can, I can, do those so you I can hand these to you and then you could just wipe them off. I'm gonna get around the uh, screws and where the handle meets the blade. That's where a lot of stuff sort of gunks up on these things.
this has more pitch on it than it has rust. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to sharpen um, basically take these off so I could have control. So there's these um, what are they, files and there's this kind of file and so either one works really. I like these ones best have more control, I feel like. Mm. Um, and so I'm gonna do the ones that don't need as much sharpening first, so we have to just get them out of the way. So these are bypass, so they do this. And they get sharpened on the, out, the outer edge. So you're just gonna there's already a little bevel there. I'm just gonna follow the bevel and follow all the way through. This side has a bigger bevel. Spencer is going to lube them with what? TV washer. Okay. This is just a, a slice of small squirt in the, in the area where the, uh, there, big enough. All of these could be taken completely apart and you can detail clean every little piece. Um, some of them have replacement parts. These are Coronas and they get replacement parts. They're not guaranteed, but you can buy replacement parts. I don't have any Felcos. Felco guarantees their parts. So if you take those apart and lose a part or they're corroded or something, they'll replace them. Um, I don't have any that do that. Uh, the Fiskars are also, they would come apart. Um, these are Mueller, Mueller or Mullen? Mueller, I think. Mueller, yeah. And they're a fairly new company. They don't come with any guarantees either. I really like these though. Um, I don't remember what these are. I, I don't remember which ones these are, but I really like this kind of spring, actually, and that it has this little hinge, oh, this hinge to hold it together rather than this style with the button. I don't know. I think when I was in school, I had this style, so it just, it's really natural for me. Anyway, so these are also bypass burners. There's only one blade on these. It's on the outer edge of the fat skin, fat skinny? You say thin, skinny? Fat, thin, fat, fat, skinny? Wow. Okay, I don't know. Uh, this blade. No body chain, I've heard of The wider, Blade, wider, thinner blade has the actual blade on it, yeah. and this side doesn't. So you want to use your file on the outside of this blade, and you're just going to follow it all the way through. How do you know when you're sharp? Is there a question? You can do a finger test, just like you would a knife.
want to put a little bit of pressure, not just like, you're not just sweeping it. You actually put a little pressure on there. You do want to file away any nicks. You can see the little nicks in there. If the nicks aren't too bad, you could file them away. If they're really bad, nothing you can do about it. Never. Unless you had Velcros, because then they would just <laughs> replace the blade for you. Obviously not, because I have none. That's feeling a lot better. And then you can just go over the back side real, with one or two without getting caught. And just make sure there's no shavings. And then I always like to take one or two passes on this side and just make sure there's no like gunk. And make sure that's all good. The other thing you're, you can do when you're checking these is making sure that um, they are still actually touching because sometimes there's a gap between them and that they, they would be useless that way. So. If you're wondering why we have so many, it's because I lose them all the time. This is the most you'll ever see me with at one time. I also keep some in the house. Oh, I forgot to look in the... <laughs> I have more in the house. No, no. I forgot to look at the no, no, no. thing next to the door. How can we have three, three months from now we'll lose every one of them? Probably. This one, and I'll probably be able to show you, but there's a big nick right there. But I end up doing with ones that are really bad like that as I try to use those ones if I have to cut roots underground. Because that, that is really damaging to your pruners. See the... And like these ones don't have their spring anymore. And I could buy a new spring for these. These are Corona BP6250. Just look that up and find the spring for them. Tip's broken too. <laughs> yeah. Maybe these are getting retired. The tip's <laughs> broken, there's lots of nicks. It's missing its spring. Oh, and the latch is also broken. Yeah. Bye bye. It's <laughs> funny. All right.
They have these, what is this called? Carbide? The black blade? Yeah. They're easy to um, sharpen because you're, you end up shaving a little bit of that off and you can see the like shiny yeah. metal. at the angle until you get it down because you don't have the same kind of control or I don't feel like I have the same kind of control but it does have a bigger bite so it's getting through some of that like yeah because there was nicks on there and it's getting through it a little better follow through because if you stop short you'll create nicks. And tighten most of these so if they're feeling loose like that you can tighten them up a little bit. All right so then I've got these. Then we'll take take care of these extra rusty slug ones. We definitely want them to be sharp because no need for the slugs to suffer. They could just get sliced right in half. <laughs> well, they don't want to suffer hacking through a slug. That's gross. Seriously, the best remedy is for slugs. So satisfying, too. <laughs> and then they just decompose in the garden. If you have a slug sanctuary that you would like me to send the slugs to, please direct message me and I will be happy to collect them in a glass jar and send them to you. Okay, now we have our shovels to do. off all the caked on mud and then and then make it put scrubby bubbles 
on it, let it sit there for a minute. Same with this hula ho. Muddy. We used to keep our tools outside in a shed that's kind of exposed, not directly to rain, but to, definitely to the elements. They all got so rusted out there. And rusty tools are dull, dull tools. So even though I can clean up the rust from the head of the shovel, like, if this totally rusts, it's gonna rust off the handle and be completely useless or become really weak and be useless. Found another one, crusty soil scoop. Just clean it off. This might not be a perfect, like super clean, perfect job, uh, but it sure is better than not cleaning your tools at all and just gives us a good head start into spring. shovels we have a little bit bigger of a file and it's the same principle just find the edge it's on this side and on this side but mostly this side so One of my favorite tools. It does such a good job weeding. So this is the back side of your shovel and the, the blade is at an angle this direction. So you want to pull your file down this way and down this way.
can almost hear the difference as it gets sharper. It's not going to be as sharp as like a pruner blade. Yeah. Here's advice to hold this down if you don't have somebody to help you. <laughs> okay, so then the last thing we have is I just have three tools with wood handles and best practices is you use some kind of oil and oil them up. This is just olive oil from our kitchen. And I'm just gonna oil them up a little bit. It just helps the wood from splitting. Um, you can use Vaseline. That helps it uh, weatherproof it a little bit too. If you wanted. You could use like specialized wood. Teak oil or stuff too. Like, hmm? like teak oil or. Well, that's really only for teak wood. Oh yeah. Um, you could use like Murphy's oil there soap stuff if you're like really dirty and you need cleaning and oiling. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You could tell the difference, like these are four years old and I kept up on those. This it's two years old. No, it's, I got it for Ocean View, so it's probably about four years old as well. And we haven't been oiling it, and you can see how grayed out it is. Um, it's not splitting yet, but it, it'll definitely like some oil. Probably take, soak up a little bit more than the others. prevents it from splintering too. Mm -hmm. Luckily there's not any splinters. You don't want splinters in your wood tools because you aren't going to be paying attention to that. Your hand's going to slip and that's not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Go. Go. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Your wood's only gonna so accept so much oil at once, so just, you know, do your best. And then do let it soak in because I've made the mistake of doing this and immediately going and using it and your hands are gonna slip because it's so oily. I've done it. Yeah. Excellent. Alright. So, that gets washed, trashed, put away. That's it.
for today's video. I hope that you were inspired to go clean your tools. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's winter time. There's not much to do in the garden. So um, sometimes getting stuff like this done and getting ramped up for spring helps sort of bridge the gap between bored out of our minds and we <laughs> finally get to go in the garden. <laughs> so I, anyway, yeah, anything else? No. No? All right. Well, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Until then, keep celebrating life. Bye.